Do you ever wonder if you're making newbie guitar learning mistakes that might be taking you down the wrong road? I was just thinking back on the last 20 years of my journey in learning and teaching the guitar, and I thought to myself, it would really be helpful to some folks if I made a list of the things I'd do differently if I was starting all over again. If past Tony could heed this advice, my guitar journey would look much more like a straight road as opposed to a windy one filled with detours and road closures. So if you're sitting there with your guitar, go ahead and put it away. We're actually not gonna be needing it today. Let's go ahead and get started. Mistake number one. Imagine your buddy wants to go on a road trip. You hop in the car and say, hey, where are we headed? Your friend responds with, we're just gonna go where the road takes us. The excitement's gonna fuel you for a little bit, but after hour number five, you get this overwhelming feeling of, what's the whole point of this? Now think about the same scenario. You hop in the car and your buddy says, hey, we're headed to the Beacon Theater to see the Allman Brothers play. It's gonna be about a five hour drive. Now you're excited about the whole drive because you actually know what lies ahead. This is the exact thing I did that started me off on the wrong foot. I simply wanted to play guitar, but I never stopped to ask myself why I was even interested in playing the guitar. If you don't know why you wanna play the guitar, the true reason you're picking it up, you'll end up being unfocused and just wandering around aimlessly. Do yourself a favor right now and figure this out. I've worked with mostly older beginner guitar students, and what I've found is that most of them simply want to be able to play through some of their favorite songs. So if that's your goal, it's going to make this next mistake much easier to fix. Mistake number two. When I first started guitar, I worked in the music store at the Old Town School of Folk Music. It was a blast. Essentially, I had access to all the music books, all the teachers, and plenty of special workshops. Turns out, what seemed like a dream scenario actually became a bit of a confusing nightmare. There was so much information around me, I ended up just dabbling in a bit of everything as opposed to picking my goal and only looking at the things that pertain to it. You're actually in the same boat right this very second. Here's the deal. There are a billion guitar lessons available to you at any point in time you want. Paid lessons, free lessons, and plenty of advice to go around. Guitar players are not short on their opinions. But as a beginner, you can actually ignore 90% of that information for now and there's a simple filter you can use to do that. What's worked for me and a bunch of my students is to focus exclusively on the five core guitar skills that help you learn and play songs. Technique, the foundations of playing like fretting, strumming, and even finger picking. Guitar licks, think the intro to Sweet Home Alabama or the signature lick from Wonderful Tonight, by Eric Clapton, of course, uh, improvisation or guitar solos. As a beginner, you may be a little skeptical of this, but if approached in its most basic form, it results in major fun and progress. Rhythm guitar, the basic strumming of simple chord progressions, and chord transitions, the cousin to rhythm guitar, uh, changing from one chord to another. Focusing on these five things is the direct path to learning and playing songs. If you're in the beginner phase, I give you permission to ignore everything but these five things for at least your first year. This is exactly what we do every week inside Tony's Acoustic Challenge. So if you want to accelerate through the beginner phase, you should check out tacguitar.com to see how it works. Mistake number three. When someone tells you you have to do something, think of your parents telling you to clean your room way back when. There's a little voice, sometimes a big voice, in your head that has major resistance to cleaning your room. It's almost as if you find more gratification in not doing it because someone told you you should, or you just feel obligated in a negative way to do it. Practice is the guitar equivalent of cleaning your room. It's mundane. It's boring. It conjures up negative feelings and guilt-laden obligation. It needs to get directly filed in the should category. So Tom, you're telling me practice is a mistake. Yes, I am. Don't practice the guitar. Think mindless scales and non-musical exercises. Instead, play the guitar. Think musical things like licks, chords, and ultimately songs. You know, the things that are addicting to play so you actually crave playing the guitar. Mistake number four. When I was first starting, my self-prescribed bulletproof way to get better was to practice guitar for an hour every day. This looked great on paper, but the reality is after about a week and a half, this was not sustainable at all. It put me in a lose-lose situation. I never won. And I ended up feeling guilty when I could only pick up the guitar for a few minutes. So how do you put yourself in a win-win situation? 
Since those days, I've learned through books like James Clear's Atomic Habits, Charles Duhigg's The Power of Habit, and BJ Fogg's Tiny Habits that playing guitar in small chunks consistently over time leads to faster progress than fits and starts separated by large amounts of inactivity. See, when you play guitar in spurts, you end up spending the time you have relearning and essentially starting from scratch again and again. This equals minimal to no progress. When you play consistently over time, you will see your progress skyrocket because you're building on your previous and recent wins. So committing to a sustainable and consistent 10 minute per day guitar playing session for even just four days per week puts you in a win-win scenario. If you get your 10 minutes in, you can celebrate. You did what you committed to. If you get more than 10 minutes, it's like the cherry on top. Mistake number five. As I was getting some momentum with my guitar journey, I kept having this nagging question. Am I doing this right? Is what I'm doing exactly like the song I'm trying to play? Looking back, I realized that my expectations were way out of line. And I mean, seriously out of line. Those questions led me to a dead end feeling like I couldn't move on until it was absolutely perfect. I began feeling like, well, if I can't get this, I can't get anything. I fell into the gap trap. I got into guitar because I expected a certain result, the end result of me playing like my guitar heroes, playing effortlessly. I thought I was gonna easily lead songs and play with folks, and then I came to the realization of how far I was from that end result I really wanted. That gap between where I was and where I wanted to be really pissed me off. The adjustment that I needed and eventually put into action was focusing on my progress as opposed to how far away my end goal was. I started to focus on my progress over being perfect and it opened up a huge opportunity for me, actually a few. I felt positive about my playing, I felt accomplished, like the time I put in was worth it. It opened me up to try new things instead of feeling hung up or stuck on a single thing. It led me to play more because I love that feeling of consistent incremental progress. I couldn't get enough of it. I was addicted to playing. The mantra that I still use to this day is progress over perfection. If I can say I'm 1% better than I was yesterday, that's a huge win for me. And if I keep things in perspective, that incremental 1% progress is moving me towards my goal consistently. You know what they say, slow and steady wins the race. Mistake number six. If I had a nickel for every time I looked at my guitar playing and cited all of the things that I did wrong or could have done better, I'd be rich. I'd say things like, I didn't play that note clearly. I didn't get that chord change. I can't do bar chords, they're 100% impossible. You wanna talk about frustration? I felt like every time I played the guitar, I ended up having more stuff to work on. And to be honest, it felt like I was on a hamster wheel, not fun, like, like the furthest from fun. Because of human nature, we have a negative bias. We always seek out and find the negative first. There's always something to do better. But instead of finding the negative, I started to make a conscious effort to focus on the positive elements and highlight them. I didn't play that note clearly turned into, I'm trying a new song and that one section is tough, but small win, I tried it. I didn't get that chord change turned into, I've never tried that chord change before, but small win, I now know a new chord change to work on. I can't do bar chords, they're absolutely impossible. Turned into, bar chords are giving me some difficulty right now, but small win, I discovered that I could use power chords for the time being. Focusing on the positive and celebrating small wins is actually scientifically proven to make you better. Courtesy of Stanford behavioral scientist BJ Fogg in his book, Tiny Habits, celebrating small wins is the key to cultivating and maintaining a positive habit, in this case, your guitar playing. We know that consistency is the key to progress. If this is true, we wanna do things that make guitar playing consistent. The things that make guitar playing a fulfilling habit. Celebrating small wins associates positive emotions with guitar playing. Making that association drives you to play guitar more. The more guitar you play, the more small wins you have, the more small wins you have, the more likely you are to play guitar. And the cycle continues and fuels your guitar playing habit. So to this day, after every guitar playing session, I identify just one small win from that day's playing session. Things like, I showed up to play today, or I finally got that lick from Big Bill Brunzi's song, Hey Hey. And even, I tried something new today, even if it didn't go ultra smooth. The negative is always there if you seek it out. 
but so is the positive. And the positive stuff is what keeps you in the game, keeps you motivated, and drives you to play guitar more and more. Now, even if you're aware of this stuff, the beginner phase can still be frustrating. And if you'd like some guidance through the first phase of your guitar playing, please check out tackguitar.com. The program has been designed with these very things in mind to help you accelerate through this formative time in your guitar journey. Now, everything we just covered here is about mindset and setting yourself up for a fulfilling and sustainable guitar journey. If you're ready to grab your guitar and start learning the basics right now in a fun and musical way, watch this video next.